Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Please, we want to know, let you subscribe and ring that bell to our YouTube channel. This is our website right here in Miss Vegas. Today's date is August 28, 2019, and we have a real good day today, and we're going to talk about some tickers we're going to be watching tomorrow. Okay, so I do want to mention that... Uh... We're going to definitely be talking about um, McDonald's, Costco, Boeing, Tesla, and JCPenney because I've been watching that one for the last couple of days. Stock Authority mentioned it to me and I've been watching. So let's get started with McDonald's. So uh, we do know that uh, McDonald's is definitely expanding their um, delivery with DoorDash. As you guys know, I did mention a while back that they had their um, Uber Eats but now they're switching over to DoorDash and so that they have a bigger footprint in the market than Uber Eats. Um, so we did catch McDonald's today on a bit of a reversal play and uh, we took the option calls for the 220 strike and caught those around 11 cents and they closed around 20 and uh, still holding them for a continuation potential tomorrow. Took it as a lotto play if you follow myself and Jim on Stock Twits, or if you follow us on Twitter, I did alert these live in real time. So if you follow us, you would have gotten this alert. And you'd be DVCR. banking right now because they closed at almost 100%. So Jim, let's hear about the McDonald's chart because you called that support beautifully and uh, holding up here at 218.07 currently after hours. Yep. And another thing about McDonald's, they're going to put a new bun on the Big Mac. Don't know if I'm going to like that or not, but that's what they're going to do. So I might as, might as well eat it. I eat there once a year. So this is the yearly chart ISP on McDonald's. CHDN. Right here, you can see this chart that I am displaying right now is called a TTM squeeze chart with the 200, the 34, and the 9 EMA. We've had a beautiful run on this all year long, all the way from 156, 56, all the way up to 221.93, with a little pullback here to the 34 EMA, called this little breakout channel, and she moved up some today. So I think it did pull back. Last time we pulled back to this 34 right here, we had a nice little bounce. So I think we're going to bring this back up to that 221.93 high breakout there. Let's pull this up to the 20 day. You can see the little channel that I called right here, and she kind of did pull back a little bit for a correction, and then she's back up. She broke that resistance high at 217.85, and here after hours we're at 218.07. So the support on this is going to be, let me go ahead and put another trend line right in here. We're going to pull this up to the one day, one minute, then I can get a final look at it. See if I missed anything. I think a nice little resistance support level right here and another one right here. So I've got a low, low, low support down here, and I'm not going to call it right there at that 215.95. I'm going to raise it up just a little bit to 216.09 for a low, low, low. Then we got another one right in here. So we got a little low channel at 216.09 to 216.34. Your third support is going to be here at 216.55. And then you got your your probably your second one at 216.81. And then that first one's going to be right here at 217.44. The resistance is that we need to break. I'm going to pull up the 20 day to find that. And I got a little trend line that I'm going to follow up. Well, I kind of see one in here. right there so the next resistance is going to be at 218.42 218.84 and then got a channel of resistance that I need to break real hard and that's going to be this 219.80 to 219.95 and if we could break that two let's just call it 220 we got some more resistances that we need to climb up get up to the to that high that 221.39 is what I want to see this is McDonald's. We're bullish on McDonald's. I've, we've been bullish on it all year long. As you can tell, it's bounced up pretty good, and we 
play the little pullbacks. This is one you want to play a pullback on and catch up when you can notice when the momentum starts to pick up. And I'll show you here on the one day, one minute. You could see the momentum as it starts to climb up. And then once it hit a double top, it pulled back. And then you could see the green just a constant way up from this bottom right here, right at 216.34, all the way up to 218.21. And beautiful call today. I said it's going to get to that 217.85, and it did, and it actually broke that. Hit the 218 was was my long resistance, and then Miss Vegas noticed she hit 218.21 and pulled back just a little bit. The next one we're going to talk about is another great call we made yesterday in the video, plus yesterday, and then right after the bell opened, she started running again. That's C-O-S-T. Yeah, so, you know, we talked about Costco, how they had a huge, uh, you know, they just opened up their first location in China. You know, Sam's Club's already out there, and that's the Walmart version of Costco. People were waiting in line like three hours plus. That they shut it down early because of uh, security reasons and, you know, safety reasons. I mean, you can't have people trampling all over each other. Although I will say from the pictures that I saw and this stuff on the news, that Costco was rammed to the bone. And people loading up the shopping carts, grabbing the pork. You know, with the swine flu there, you know, pork is limited. They're grabbing pork. They're grabbing chicken. I mean, they were just grabbing everything. So I'm sure Costco will be opening up more stores. The earnings is not out yet for a few more weeks. Uh, so stay tuned on that. But, you know, Costco had a nice open this morning and then obviously pulled back, but still bullish on Costco. And I'll just turn it over to Jim to talk about how he played that and what he's looking at next. Yeah, Costco is a great trade today. We got right in on the option trade. Let me see what where I got in on this thing at real fast I got in at the 2 310 strike for August 30th at 50 51 cents and sold it for a dollar 10 and then got back in it and it started dipping on me so I bought it a few times and then I end up taking a loss on it my mistake to get back in the trade after I made that good trade to begin with but I only had eight contracts. It was just unbelievable. And uh, But this is what we called out. Miss Vegas called this out yesterday and really did well with this trade yesterday with all that China news. It ran all the way from 280 down here all the way up to about, oh, it closed after hours right around the 292.62 area with a 293.29 high pretty much. And we noticed the ascending triangle here into after hours, and it did pull back and hit that. This is on a daily one minute. Hit that 200 and bounced right off that 200 EMA and then rode all the way up. And I said, this, I was telling people in the room, I said, I wouldn't be surprised if this goes to 300. And we hit 299.95. And that should have been the place where people exited. I did. But once it pulled back, I tried to get back in on that 200, and it just... Went up a little bit, kind of teeter tottered around a little bit, and then bam, she started selling off. And I just panicked a little bit, and I sold it for a loss. If I would have kept it, it still didn't amount to much, The because the, I think I was too far out of the money to begin with. But So we're going to call this. We're going to see where we... I got a low support on this at 287.94 if it decides to pull back more. We're still very bullish on this trade. But I think it, we got the holiday weekend coming. There's going to be less traders out there. So I'd probably tell everybody, play a little cautiously. Come into Thursday and Friday and then come back in here strong on Tuesday. I think we're off. Market's closed, I think, maybe on Monday, ain't it, Miss Vegas? Labor Day? Yeah, it's Labor yeah. Day weekend. Yeah, so everybody come back in here on Tuesday and just start playing the heck out of it. But I have a low support at 287 with a probably my first support area right around the 291.32 maybe the second support area and then that first one's going to be here at 292.40 to 293.29 and then the resistance is we're going to have to break is going to be that high of 299.95 and you can stop this video at any time and draw some of these numbers down but 
I'm going to call low, low, low support at 287.94. And then this little channel right in here is going to be like your pivot point channel. Maybe your first support at 291.32 to 293.29 with the resistance that we need to break to get it moving up to that $300 area. And we got a target on this trade for $320 long. And I do believe we'll hit that. Christmas is coming around the corner too, so sales are going to be real good for this company. We got to break that resistance level of 295.30 to get it up to that 300, and that's COST. The next one we're going to talk about is one that's had a little bit of drama this year, but keeps fighting back. We called it down at 316, and that's Boeing. And Boeing, it was Boeing today on the move. Uh, had a nice um, reversal play here. And now uh, we traded these on the option side as well. Um, no real reason for the move. I mean, it's just probably like a technical move. Uh, you know, every day Boeing can trade, as you know, it can be up, it could be down. I mean, it's just one of those tickers that every day it does behave very differently. It, there's never any consistency for now until we get some, you know, proper resolution on what's happening with these 737 maxes, which we know are still grounded till at least November and maybe I think in, until January. So for sure till January and I'm hearing rumors that they're trying to do some testing to see if they could release them back in November. But uh, we know a lot of airlines are losing money and canceled their orders on uh, future max airs until uh, they feel that uh, there's um, confidence in the actual um, logistics of the aircraft. Which, you know, I don't blame them. Like, I mean, I wouldn't want to get on one of those planes, personally. So, hell no. Even if they were flying them today, I wouldn't want to get on one. Um, so, yeah. So, BA was a uh, trade on a technical. And uh, Jim uh, can talk about where we could see BA as a low support and potential next resistance levels. Because right now, it still was acting bullish for now. And uh, if there is a continuation tomorrow, definitely keep it on your watch. Yep. Jim, let's hear about Boeing's chart. Well, I think I'm a daredevil, so I'd probably get on it, fly to Mexico or Jamaica in it, maybe even the Caribbean. I'd take the chance. But this is Boeing. I called it right out of the gate this morning. I told Vegas, I said, we pulled back to below my third support level. And it was down here at the 351.28 that I had targeted for a support. We hit 351.18. Once I started seeing that green, I mentioned it to her, and we went through the first, the third support, we went through the second support, and we hit up here to the third support, and that would have been a good time to exit. But right now, it's kind of showing us a little uh, sending triangle. Right here into close, it's starting to squeeze a little bit, so we've got a resistance that we got to get to, which would be a double top in two days at 361.50. Now, this is a trade that I... I play, when I play it, I play the pullbacks. I always expect it to pull back a little bit. It's not one that you want to chase, but if you rec start recognizing these little patterns in here, you know, these little green patterns right after the pullback we had this morning, that was the time to get in it. You notice it bounced right off that 34 EMA, then respected the 9, came back and hit that 34 again, then bounced up above it. But that 200 also, see, these are a little bit, lopsided right now they're where i want them to be we got the 200 on the bottom the 34 and the 9 ema on top so let me magnify this back down again and give you some little support levels these are my three support levels you can stop this chart at any time i think we're going to be swimming here in a channel for a little while now unless something real bad happens i don't see it going below 350 again for a while unless it starts getting some more negative news. But for right now, I think if you played below these support channels right here at 354.15, maybe the third support would be a good time to really start keeping your eye on it. We could get another double bottom down here, and that trend would be right here, right around the 351.66 area. But anywhere in between that little channel right there, and that's about a 40 cent channel to get in. The resistance that we do need to break is going to be that 361.50, and that'll nail you up to about 362.73. If not, it shall pull back 
to maybe the second support area. Maybe this one right in here, this little pivot point. That's really, we had a triple top right there. You see that? That's pretty solid. That's a pretty solid support level right there at 357.15. So that's what I would call my second, maybe the, the critical pivot point in the channel with your, your second and your third support right down here. And this is Boeing. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be another one that's had a little bit of drama lately. We called the great pullback under 200 and it bounced all the way up and now she's pulled back to 210. I called that one too and she's bounced off that and that's Tesla. Yeah, so you know Tesla had a little bit of news today. They did say that they're now offering uh, Tesla insurance but only obviously if you have a Tesla vehicle. Um, so you can get a discount with your insurance probably anywhere from 20 to 30 percent. Uh, apparently very easy to get insurance and very easy to get a quote. They're saying it's going to be very competitive for the Tesla owners. You can just go online and uh, to their website and look at the insurance portal and uh, put in your VIN number and get a quote. And then I guess you can decide from there if it's worth uh, switching over to Tesla insurance. Um, the claims team will be located out in California, so it looks like they've outsourced a third party to look after that. And uh, that's the latest. So that's interesting that Tesla is getting into the insurance business. Uh, looks like a white white label brand, but I think that's pretty smart. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So let's hear about Tesla. All right. We're going to pull up the yearly chart just to have a look at it. I per per well mentioned a good resistance on this one today also we called this down here when it was right around here at 180 and it bounced all the way and run up to that 200 EMA at 258.82 that's why I like these moving averages so well especially even on a yearly I still use them we respected that 9 crossed over the 34 and once it hit that 200 it pulled on back it had some drama uh, they got into a little trouble with their solar panels and I think that's what the reason for it to pull back and it's done that for the last couple of months followed below that nine EMA so we're upside down on this but I think she could turn around a little bit I wouldn't be a hundred percent bullish on it right now but I would play the little pullbacks we've got a 20-day chart right here I called this 210 area told Vegas I said this could pull back to 210 and if it does that that's going to be maybe a good buy and she ran all the way up in two days all the way up to the 218 area 218 218.74 and then pulled back uh, Monday and then this morning she pulled back to a double bottom and then bounced up and hit that resistance again so right now we're at 1560 now I do believe we're going to see the the 220s again on this trade and I'm going to see I got to put a little trend line right in right in here at 21948 so we're going to pull up the daily one minute now see if I can see anything different see a little support level right here at 21406 I see another one right in here the double bottom that we had today that I called out in the room at 21471 so for now on we're just kind of go with a short little channel play I don't see it going any lower than that 212.35 I mean that that's that's beyond probably too low but I do see a third support here at 13.50 at 214.06 and then at the 214.71 with a pivot point pivot point if anybody doesn't know what that means that means it wants to make up its mind which direction it wants to go if it wants to break up to resistance or if it wants to pull back to support and usually I use that as sometimes an indicator to get out if it doesn't want to move or I use it maybe as a uh, if I at resistance and it pulls back to that pivot point area sometimes I use that as a support vice versa if I'm down at the bottom and I'm up to the pivot point and it doesn't want to break that's when I want to sell so we've got the next resistance at 216.75 218.15 and then we're going to try to get up to this 218.70. Let me adjust it to where I want to put it. 77. It did have a 218.80 high, but I go off the base of the candles. So that's Tesla. Arna. Arna. And then the last one we're going to talk about that was 
brought up by Miss Vegas. I guess Stock Authority mentioned it to her, and that was J.C. Penney's. I was also looking at it last week, but I didn't really yeah. mention it. J.C. Penney's. Well, you know what? Yeah, so he mentioned the other day just to keep an eye on it, only because, like, we kept seeing the uh, volume coming through, but, I mean, there wasn't really moving. Uh, so I said, you know what, let's just keep an eye on this J.C. Penney, and good thing we did. I mean... You know, we are seeing, obviously, a lot of insider buying here uh, after hours. And, Jim, I'll show you the latest. So, a lot of the people at the C-level, I showed you originally the director was buying. Yep. Uh, but we see here that there's been more buyers oh. coming in after hours. So, we have the director. I'm just trying to send you the um, the picture. Yeah. But um, the director, it's just loading. There it is. So, the director purchased 500,000 shares at 58.7. The chief um, compliance officer, he bought also 250,000 shares, and the CEO purchased 500,000 shares. So they're all purursing shares. Why are they doing that? We don't know. Because there's cheap. something going on. Because it's a good deal. Maybe they have something going on. We know J.C. Penny. I mean, has had a lot of struggling. You know, um, and it's too bad because I have to say, look, I've been to J.C. Penny stores. Uh, whenever I've traveled myself to the U.S. And I've always uh, liked the um, selection that they have. Um, don't find, you know, the the different designers that they have. I mean, it's it's pretty sad that, you know, it would seem that this company, that their headquarters, by the way, is in Texas, um, you know, would actually not be in business anymore. Um, so that would not be good. But, you know, um, at this price, wow, the stock's really, really pulled back. Um, so, you know, maybe there's some plans to turn uh, J.C. Penny around. I mean, there's going to be a lot of back to school specials. Um, and, and I hope that they can turn J.C. Penny around because, um, you know, it's been um, had a lot of challenges. They've had a couple stores where they've did a grand reopening. They did a grand reopening recently at the Panama City Mall. Um, and they're, it's actually launching. I think they're opening that mall on friday so that's actually good um but you know we don't want to see this stock get booted off the uh stock market off the exchange because the price of the share is too low as you can see it's definitely under a dollar so jim what are your thoughts on jc penny and um what's happening i can see why they got in it because it's a double bottom down here a yearly low at 53 cents, so it's dirt cheap. And then, I mean, just dirt cheap. And we've called this out a few times in the room, and we played it pretty good. So here we are mentioning it again. And I would probably play the pole back to about 56.78. That's where I would call low support. It did have a 53 low, but that's off of a fat wick. And let's go ahead and pull this up to 20 days. Look at it real good. As you notice, I cleared all them. Those are 2018 trend lines that I erased. I had a few blue ones in there, but so here we are. I'm going to put another trend line right here for the next resistance that we need to get to. Actually, this is a good one here. Yep, okay. Let me see if I can find one more support. I got three supports. I got a 56.78, 60 cents. 6431 for your first supports. You got a little pivot point right here, right around the 67 area. We need to break a resistance at 69.33. Seven, and this could probably be right in here at 72.95 to 74.67 for your second. And then your third and final one is going to be right here, right around 80.78 to 82.28 with a long resistance of 90 cents. I sure would love to see this get back above a buck, but remember, always be cautious and don't chase, chase trades like this unless you see the momentum picking up. And we're gonna look at the daily one minute. You can see what I mean by momentum. We did bounce off this 56.78 area a couple times. It was like that in this little channel Monday. And then finally had the ascending triangle right here as you can see, little sending triangle. Then we had the breakout, and the momentum started picking up, run up a couple of cents. Not much, but you know, if you're buying 10,000 shares, that's a couple hundred bucks. 
of uh, JC Penney's and so let me pull back to the 20 day one more time and give you them support levels we got a low support down here at 56.78 your second one at 60 your third one down here at 64.93 pivot point right here on the chart that I'm seeing is going to be in this little channel right here between 67 and 69.33 if we can break that 69.33, you've got your other resistances on up, and they will go as as needed. Please stop this video at any time and write these numbers down, or even copy and paste this chart. If you ever use it with anybody, just say that Washboard Jim and Vegas are the ones that brought it to you, and that's J.C. Penney's. And then I'm going to repeat and go back to the website. We have a little place here. Is that little bird? It's called a Tweety Bird. You can go on Twitter, follow us there, hit that follow button. From yesterday to today, we gained 13 new followers. We had 503 yesterday, now we have 516. We want to get that thing up there into the thousands. Also on the website, we have Miss Vegas' stock twits where she posts alerts also. Hit that follow button. I also have mine on there. Let me pull it up. Jimmy, 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 where are you? Get it together. Um, there it is and there's my little one hit that follow button follow washboard Jim I post charts in here also Miss Vegas is mo mostly she posts them in there on Twitter but uh, she gets a lot of that stuff off me too so Miss Vegas anything else to say no I just want to say that you know we really work together as a team and I mean I do a lot more posting than Jim because you know he's just so busy with looking at all the different charts as well and so I usually just grab and paste and I post it on stock tweets and it just feeds directly into, um, you know, into uh, Twitter. So they are linked up together. So, uh, you know, if you don't have stock tweets, which I highly recommend, I mean, if you're a new trader and we're going to do another video down the road, we're working on one as we speak, uh, the content is being developed. But if you are definitely new to trading um, or you are trading, and you know you want to connect with other traders um i think stock twits is a fantastic platform we're huge fans of stock twits and i gotta tell you i've met so many amazing people and so is jim and uh we love it so i mean i gotta say it's the one of the best things i'm so happy uh someone like howard came up with that idea to introduce stock twits and to create a platform for traders to connect and and communicate um, some people misuse it, obviously, and they bash people. You just got to block them. That's why they have a block feature. But, you know, I'll talk about that in another video about stock twits and the beauty of the platform. And not only that, but they have a trade app coming up very soon. We should hear more news about that. Uh, so stay tuned on that. But in the meantime, follow, subscribe, and uh, we'll share the information in real time as possible. So you might see me posting more during the day uh, just because I got Jim tied up doing other things, uh, helping out the room. So she thank means, you so much, everyone. And she really means tied up, like, you know, handcuffs, yeah. handcuffs in the over. works. <laughs> yeah. So we love stocks. Today's date is August the 28th, 2019. Everybody be safe. We we'll, might put another video out tomorrow. If not, you'll hear from us. We'll do maybe do one on Sunday or Tuesday for the uh, Monday for the upcoming week. Everybody have a nice Labor Day, and we love stocks.